Hello everyone, welcome to the 16th episode of Peculiar with Miyakin. First of all, I want to apologize. This project took longer to finish than I expected because I had to take care of things and there were other reasons. So anyway, for this one, I actually had been wanting to do something new and I was like, let's try making an animal head. That'd be fun, I think. And why stop there? Make it a furry character. No, not a human character with animal horns or ears, like full-blown anthropomorphic animal character so I can pander to the furry community. I might be pandering, but you can't deny my contribution. Now, I myself am not a furry, in fact, I find them weird, but listen, when I find something to be weird, that doesn't necessarily mean I hate the thing or have any kind of negative feelings towards it, it just simply means I don't get used to the thing and I'm still wrapping my head around it. Prior to working on this doll, I watched videos about the furry community to get more insights, and I gotta say how they built their community is so admirable and wholesome, I respect that a lot. But do I still find furries weird? Yes. I don't think I'll ever get used to seeing people dressed in fursuits. Keep being you though! Also, the Bara artists I follow have done at least one or two furry pieces, and to proclaim myself as one of them, I decided to make this doll, and I just felt like it. I went with a tiger because tigers seem to be a popular choice in the furry community. The inspirations were Tony the Tiger, the Tiger Dancers from Zootopia. If you're a furry, let me ask you something. When Zootopia came out, were you like, were you ecstatic? And King from Tekken. Okay, without further ado, let's start the customization. For the body base, I'll be using another action figure from Spin Master. It works so well for Bowser, so I'll do it again for this one. I picked an Aquaman because his torso is mostly orange, but it doesn't actually matter because we'll sculpt and paint over it. Let's unbox it. I apply heat around the neck using a hair dryer and yank the original head off. We won't be using that. For the head base, I'll be using one of the failed mini Akins. I'm really turning myself into a furry. Last time I did this was with Bowser and it was an ever after high head so the mouth of the neck hole flushed very nicely around the neck. But this one is a monster high head which has a smaller neck hole mouth so the head only sits on top of the neck instead of being flush with it. It still attaches very well so I guess that's fine, we still can work with this. Anyway, let's prep the face by removing the hair and the face and clean it. Since we're gonna do a complete head reconstruction, we kinda have to make the base smaller so the end result will be in the right size, like around the size of the original. So with an exacto knife, I take out good portions of the sides. I really like this pairing because even though the head is attached very well to the neck peg, it's still very easy to remove and reattach and let me tell you, it is a blessing to be able to work on the body and the head separately. Anyway, I'm gonna split and take out another portion of the back. Here I'm marking and drilling holes for the armature wires. Using epoxy glue, I'm sticking a small clump of aluminum foil to cover the nose and the mouth so we won't have to use as much epoxy clay when we make the snout. Now we can start inserting the armature wires to sew the head back together, determining the shapes and stuff like that. You really want the final and the future epoxy to be fully integrated with each other so it won't crack or anything, and these wires play an important part to achieve that. I know I could take only the neck hole and build the rest from scratch, but I feel like preserving more surface would make things easier. And here's what we have. It looks fucking horrifying, it looks like it comes straight from Silent Hill. What trauma is this representing? But I promise you it's gonna be fine. Anyway, let's set the wires in place with epoxy glue.
Before we start sculpting, protect the surface you're working on for easier cleanup. First thing I'm gonna do is to conceal all the wires with epoxy medium to stabilize the head so nothing will get squished. Then I cover the base of the snout, sorry for being out of frame. After that's cured, I build materials all around to make out the overall shape of the head. It's an octagon. I ended up applying too much material, so I take out some of it with my rotary tool. Throughout the head sculpting process, I'm looking at a 3D model of the Tiger Dancer by Pedro Lima on Sketchfab as references. I'll leave the link down below. Here I'm adding the eyeballs. Applying material on the forehead. And then the cheeks, sorry for being out of frame again. The eyelids. The nose bridge. Top of the mouth. It's starting to take shape, right? For the ears, we're gonna drill some holes and set armature wires. Now we can start sculpting the actual ears. The actual nose. This part really seals the deal I think. It really makes it look like a feline head. The ears are sharp right now but I changed them to be round again later. I also made the chin to be more square, but I guess I forgot to record that part, sorry. Anyway, as you can see there's still quite a gap between the neck hole and the neck, so I covered the neck with masking tape and put more material around the neck hole to match the circumference. And we're pretty much done sculpting the head! It took me two weeks to finish it, well technically only a week because I spiraled for another week but hey, I made it. I think I made the forehead a little too wide so it's more human-like, but I guess that's appropriate considering the anthropomorphic aspect, I don't know, I'm just bullshitting. Overall, I think it looks pretty good, but for some reason I feel like this looks like a panther's head than a tiger's. So I asked my sister about it and she was like, what's the difference, they're both big cats. I mean she got a point but, you know what, never mind, let's move on to the body. The first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of all the fin parts on the body with my rotary tool with a cutting bit attached. Now I'm marking and cutting the body apart, separating the neck and splitting the torso in half like so. The cutting bit wasn't deep enough to cut all the way through the material, so I have to use a hacksaw to finish the job. Inside there's walls and bars that really reinforce the construction so it's harder to tear it apart, but with some elbow grease it can be done.
let's clean up the inside even more to prevent problems during the future reconstruction. We're going to make the deltoids bigger later so I'm gonna have to make the arm sockets wider by cutting some of the material around them like this. The shoulders of this action figure have exposed joint plates so be careful as to not let the cutting bit touch the joint plates. Rotate the arm as you go so it won't happen. I'm following the light full clearance method. I'm kinda mad I didn't come up with this. This method is so much more approachable than making the arm sockets from scratch like I usually do. So thank you so much Catherine, you've helped me one too many times already. I'm also cutting the lower legs because we're gonna do a transplant. They're made out of hard vinyl and it's really annoying to cut them. Cut off the fingers, we're gonna sculpt him new ones. Using a sanding bit, I'm getting rid of the belt detail and other parts that need to be flattened. For the lower leg donor, it's gonna be Heath Burns because it's what I have laying around. I will also cut off his toes. Here I start marking and drilling holes into the necessary parts for the reconnection later. Now we can install the wire, space the torso to be a bit wider, and fill the gaps with aluminum foil and hot glue. Here's what we have. Once the silhouette is correct, we can conceal the addition with epoxy to make the shape permanent. I have to do some readjustment to the arm sockets. You need to create gap all around the shoulders. I didn't make any in the under the armpit area, so I'm doing that now with a diamond bit. That's big enough I think, this is important so when we make the shoulders bigger, they still can rotate at ease. Anyway, I clean up the gap with an exacto knife and get rid of the plastic residue. As I mentioned before, this figure has exposed shoulder joint plates as you can see here. Monster High or Ever After High boy dolls don't have this. If we simply add epoxy around it when we make the shoulders bigger, I think the end result would look weird. And I don't think we can cover the entire thing, not if you want to keep the shoulder joint functional, but I think we can cover some of it. Spread out the shoulder the farthest it can go and make a horizontal mark across the shoulder joint plate like this. Shit, I'm out of frame again. So when you bend the shoulder in its relaxed position, you got your mark. I hope what I'm saying makes sense because it's kinda difficult to explain. Cut out a piece of craft foam and glue it around the shoulder joint plate and align it with the mark. That's how much can be covered. See, the shoulder joints still work fine. Now we can start making the deltoids bigger but still, keep in mind the size and rotate the shoulders as you go. This is the only technical sculpting in this project so it's worth the worry. And here's what we got. The shoulder joint plates are a bit sunken but not off-putting since we managed to cover some of the parts. Now it's time for the fun part, cosmetic sculpting, making the muscle and all that good shit.
I already epoxy glued a magnet there for you know what, his dick, and then concealed the area with epoxy. Let's sculpt the nipples instead of painting them on, cause why not? On to sculpting the back muscles. And then the butt, give him that BBL treatment. We're pretty much done sculpting the torso, what do you think? I know the gaps of the arm sockets are pretty obvious, but there's not much we can do about them since the shoulders still have to be able to rotate. For the fingers, we're gonna need armature, so let's drill some holes for them. And for the armatures, I made some short twisted wires and epoxy glued them into the holes. Four fingers on each hand should be okay, I think. Actually, you know what? Let's build more materials on the forearms. Back to the fingers, the first step is to block out the shapes. This is only my second time sculpting fingers, so bear with me. I'm trying to make them look like paws so they'll be bigger than regular fingers. In theory, that should be easier, right? I don't know. There's something about hands that just annoy me. I don't know how to draw them, I don't know how to sculpt them, which is ironic because we do those things with our hands. Same thing for the toes, but I gotta be careful about the size because I still want the fit to fit regular monster high shoes. I could only make 3 toes for each foot which is very weird but whatever. Anyway now we drill holes in the lower legs and calves for the reconnection. For the new bones, I'm gonna use these acrylic rods which I already cut to size and epoxy glue them in place. Now we can conceal the transition areas with epoxy. I thought about giving him digitigrade legs, but I want him to wear shoes and digitigrade legs look weird with shoes on, so I'm making the legs straight. I know the ankles and the feet look small compared to the rest of the body, but well, there's nothing we can do about them now, so let's just move on, okay? For the base of the tail, here I'm determining the length of this thick jewelry wire, double it, cut it, and then twist it together. Then I wrap thinner wire around it to keep it in check. Drill the hole. Epoxy glue it in place. Apply epoxy around the base to make the wires permanent. We're done with the body modification, it took me 10 days. Does this look like a 10 day job to you? Anyway, now it's time for the most loathsome process for sculpting which is sanding. First I use the rotary tool with a sanding bit on to get rid of the big bumps.
then the rasps And finally to make everything nice and smooth again, I use medium and fine grit sanding sponges. I also sand lightly every joint plate using a diamond bit so the future paint won't chip off as easily. After that, I rinse everything as thorough as I could and let everything dry. Since my finance is still in shambles, I'll talk more about that later. For the primer, I'll be using this cheaper alternative. Like, it's awfully cheap, it's kinda suspicious, but let's see how it turns out. Considering the price, I think it worked amazing. I gave the entire thing two coats of primer. And to color everything, I'm gonna use the spray can from the same brand, same price. I gave it 3 coats and it turned out to be very very glossy. I should have known because spray paint seemed to have this result but that's alright I guess. I think we can do something about it later. Also work on a cushy surface so the paint won't get scraped off like here I'm working on some packaging foam. Since this doll is mostly epoxy, I don't see the point in using MSC so I'm gonna try to finish it with acrylic paints only. Now, I've never really familiarized myself with painting, so just bear with me. Here I'm blocking out the white parts on the body, but I'm not using white paint because I think that would look flat and bad, so I'm using Naples yellow instead. This Naples yellow paint is really difficult to build up. I think it took me 5 layers and it's still not doing full coverage, but I don't want to build up too many layers, so I just went with that amount. Also, I don't really trust painting on a glossy surface, but let's hope for the best. Using a bristle brush, I paint the edges to get that more natural look. Let's start painting the inner arms and the palms the same color. Do the same to the inner legs. This is what we have, looks pretty good I think. Since we're not using any MSC, soft pastels for body blushing would be out of the question, so I'm gonna try to shade using acrylic paint. The goal is the same, to add more dimension, but it's kinda like soft shading versus cell shading in drawing. You do soft shading with soft pastels and you do cell shading with acrylics. Let's color the nipples. Using diluted dark brown paint, I'm redefining the lines of the muscles. Finally, we can start painting the black stripes to make it look like a tiger because up to this point, it looks like a fox. Start by painting a vertical line from the nape down to the butt crack or the base of the tail. Then from that vertical line, paint horizontal lines branching out from it. You wouldn't want to make the stripes sharp and clean, I think they look better streaky and jittery. Paint stripes on the arms. And the legs. And we're done painting the stripes. It's looking like a tiger alright. It only took me one layer of black paint for all the stripes because black paint tends to be very opaque. And how could we forget? The toe bins.
Moving on to the head, I begin blocking out the lighter color, like most part of the snout, around the eyes, and the inner parts of the ears. Then we can start shading. Paint the nose and nostrils. Moving on to the eyes, the irises him to take up most of the eyes, so I'm giving him big yellow irises. I gave them some shading already, and for some reason here I'm painting the scleras dark brown. I don't know why, I guess to make the irises pop more? Let's paint on the pupils. Using black acrylic paint, here I'm painting the eyeliner thingy, you know something that you'd see on a tiger to really define the eyes. Darken the pupils. Dot on the eye shines. Paint the lip line. Now we can finally paint the stripes. I tried looking at references but they just confused me so I ended up freestyling. And this is the result. What do you think? Does this look convincing enough? And for the last touch, I paint the tips of the ears black. We're done with the painting stage but the doll is still glossy and all the paint job is still unprotected. To take care of that, I'll use this matte top coat spray, still from the same brand and price as the primer and the spray paint. I sprayed everything 3 times with that stuff, can you see the difference? It feels different to the touch at least. The primer, the spray paint, and the top coat all together still cost only half the price of a Mr. Super Clear. I will definitely buy the primer and the top coat again, the spray paint, uh, I'll just stick to regular acrylics. Let's address the tail. First I made this tube out of black t-shirt fabric and insert it to the wire. Sew that around the wire. I already prepared black and orange yarn wefts to fill the tail, and I glued two rows of black wefts starting from the tip. Personally, I think gluing anything on fabric should be a crime, but that's better than gluing anything on metal. I'm just picking my poison, okay? Trim them. Then I glue two rows of orange wefts. Then trim them, but be careful not to cut any of the black weft. Glue and trim another two rows of black weft. Glue and trim another two rows of orange weft, so on and so forth until you reach the base of the tail. I glue some loose black weft around the base of the tail to make the transition nicer, then trim them. Tame the tail with a wet toothbrush and let it dry. The face looks fine I think but it has no personality so I clump and glue some loose black yarn weft like this. Then I glue them on the face to make the eyebrows. Then I trim and style them. 
Do they help? I think they do. A little. Not much, but they elevate something. We're done with the doll itself. Let's reattach the head and put it aside. I would like to say thank you to those of you who have donated through my coffee. It really helped me during this hard time I'm facing. It means a lot and I really really appreciate it. I'm really trying to make a sustainable income doing these videos but I haven't reached that point and I need your help to get there. In the meantime, I'm trying to reach a goal so please consider donating. Furries, you guys are looted. Those first sets cost thousands of dollars so spare change. If you can't donate, please keep sharing my videos to help me increase my watch time. Though, even if I don't reach my goal, I think I'll be okay. I'll just spiral for a few months, it happened before. But I really wish the goal will be reached because honestly, I'm losing my shit over here. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Moving on to the outfit, I'll be making most of it out of this fun holographic stretchy fabric. In fact, this fabric was what inspired me to make this doll as a wrestler. I mean, I didn't want him to be just a furry character, he gotta be something. This fabric feels like regular t-shirt material, I think I can sew it with my sewing machine. God damn it, nope, my sewing machine hates this material, it still skips stitches. I swear, my sewing machine hates anything that isn't cotton, it's racist like that. And I tried everything, I played around with the tension, I used ballpoint needles, I used a knit foot, yet still... My sewing machine is the Brother FS101 which is not a cheap sewing machine so I expected more from it, that's why I'm mad. Fuck it, let's do it by hand, but I better get to use my sewing machine for my next project because this shit is getting on my nerves. This is the pattern for the briefs and the first thing I'm gonna do is hem the leg holes. So the front seams together. I always trim the excess seam allowance just to make everything tidy. So the inner crotch. Turn it right side out and hem the waistline. And we're done with the briefs. He looks like a stripper and that's great, that means we're in the right direction. I might have sculpted his dick a little too big because the bulge is so protruding. God, that word sounds dirty. I guess size does matter because if it's too big, it's not very flattering. For the knee pads, I cut out this rectangle and hem the top and bottom parts. So the side seams. So when you turn it right side out, you got this tube for the base of a knee pad. For the actual pads, I cut out these shapes out of craft foam then cover them with some contrasting fabric. Now we can sew them to the bases. I sew them in a way so no stitches is visible on the outside. I think it's called invisible stitching or understitching. I don't know. So basically, I only sew the base and the craft foam, not all the way through the black fabric. Does that make sense? And it looks something like this. I made two of them for the knee pads and two smaller ones for the elbow pads. For the fingerless gloves, the pattern looks like this. Can't believe I'm making this. First, I'm gonna hem the hole for the thumb. It looks something like this. Hopefully, you get the idea. Then I sew the seams that separate the thumb with the rest of the fingers. Turn it right side out and hem the hole for the rest of the fingers. Sew the side seams. Hem the slit. Added the wristbands, I connected them with thin elastics to turn them into loops. And we're done with the fingerless gloves. They're kinda loose but whatever, they still fit so I'm taking this as a win. Is he going on a wrestling ring or to a circuit party? Both. 
I felt like the torso was kinda empty so I made him a harness because he's a slut, but I don't think it suits him so I ended up teaching it. Moving on to the shoes, turned out I modified the feet too much so they don't fit regular monster high shoes, motherfucker. But luckily I found these doll shoes online, I don't know who they're for but that doesn't matter because they fit. But of course we're gonna do reconstruction to them because they're not in the right style. First I'm gonna get rid of all the fabric parts leaving only the toe box and the sole. I'm trying to be careful because the quality of these shoes are kinda shit. They might fall apart. Oh god damn it. It's okay, we can just glue the pieces back together. Nice and clean. Great, now we can start remaking the shoes. I'm still gonna use the holographic fabric, but as you can see, the material is flimsy and I need it to be more stiff, more structured. So I'm trying out this iron-on fabric adhesive sheet. Just iron the glossy side to the wrong side of the fabric until it sticks. Trim the excess fabric, peel off the protective sheet and iron it to another piece of fabric. I'm using some final fabric. Now we got this nice structured layer of material. Out of that layer, I cut out this shape and punch some holes. Glue the piece around the sole. I made a long rectangle out of the same material and glue that to the front of the shoe for the tongue part. I tried using embroidery thread for the shoelace but it looks sad so I changed it with some satin cord and that looks a lot better. Anyway, let's paint the sole and the toe box black for cohesiveness. Give the paint job three protective layers of matte varnish. And we're finished with the shoes. Look pretty cool if I say so myself. I'll trim the shoelaces once I put the shoes on the doll. And finally, we can call it a doll. So what do you think of this furry special project? Well, that's a pun I never intended. I name him Tiger the Wrestler. What? Less is more. Do you like him? Do you not like him? What part do you like the most? What part do you hate the most? Let me know in the comments down below. I had fun making him. I mean, sure there was shit ton of things to do, but I took my time so nothing was frustrating. I'd even say he's one of my favorites. To the furries, I hope I did your interest justice. I think this is my longest video to date. Hope you stick around. Anyway, I think I'm gonna sell him. I need the money. If you're interested in purchasing, DM me on Instagram with an offer, I'll consider it. So yeah, this is the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed it, thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe if you want to, donate, see you in the next one, bye!